Funny Face with singing stars Jeff Brooke and Viola Parker. I love your sunny face, your sunny, funny face. For you're a beauty with more than beauty. You've got a lot of personality and teeth. A thousand laughs I've found in having you around. Though you're no Lana Turner, for worlds I got free place. The scene is the living room of Jimmy Reeves' home. It's a big room, but it needs to be because it's Jimmy's birthday, and everyone in town seems to have come to his party. The one Jimmy's happiest to see is his old pal, Dugsy Gibbs, who's just returned after a long absence, and Jimmy's bringing him up to date with the news. Recently, Jimmy's foster mother died and left him a legacy. Rich, the old darling was rolling in it, and she left a quarter of what she had to me, provided... Oh, I knew there'd be a catch in it. What was it, swear off wine and women, or look after a goldfish? Oh, nothing as easy as goldfish. I had to become guardian of my three foster sisters, Dora, June, and Frankie. Uh, that's a funny face. She isn't here yet, but when you see her... Uh oh like that, is she? Oh, uh, well, even so, old boy, I mean to say, for a set-up like this, I'd become guardian of three with funny faces. Wouldn't take so much guarding. You wait till you meet her. Hey, see that angelic-looking child by the door? The red-haired, the freckled face, anything but angel walking this way? That's Frankie. Hello, Jimmy, darling. Oh. So we meet again. You know her? Known her all my life. Ever since we met at the airport this afternoon. I'm sure you're mistaken, sir. Oh, no. I've always known you. Once Rockefeller didn't have a nickel. Once Henry didn't have a Ford. Once Mr. Hines had never met a pickle. Won a ball or done a bat. Once Mickey Mouse had never met Walt Disney. Hackard didn't know about a shoe. But I'm here to us ever, my dear, there was never a time I didn't know about you. Once Mr. Angus didn't have a mutton, and Rita Hayward didn't have a man. Once Mr. Meyer didn't own a button, Sydney a bridge or Black Street a bus. Once Phil Wood didn't know about a circus, Lyndon didn't know about a cue. But I'm here to ever, my dear, there was never. No, never a time, not any time. I didn't know about you. Didn't know about you. Without giving Dugsy a chance to explain the disputed meeting, Jimmy turns him over to Dora and June and firmly ushers Frankie into his study. But I want to ask that nice man. Dugsy will keep. There are a few things I want to ask you myself first. Have you ever seen this book before? It's my diary. Jimmy, give it to me at once. No, oh, no. Wherever did you get it? You, you haven't read it. Everyone in the country club would have read it if I hadn't found it first, I hope. Oh, is that where I lost it? Are oh, you darling? I've been so worried. You've been worried? There's enough in this to keep you defending libel actions all your life. Jimmy, there's not one teeny thing like that at all. Only my innermost thoughts. And surely people can't sue you for what you think. Oh, no. No wonder your hair's red with these thoughts smoldering inside. My ghost, if the paper's got hold of this. As if anyone could. I'm most frightfully careful of it. So I found. Hand me one of those thick envelopes on my desk. One of these? Uh, no, the big blue ones. Thank you. I should really put this in the refrigerator. But until I decide whether to sell it to you know to make improved atom bombs... I'm going to keep it locked in my safe. At least it'll start no chain reaction in here. But, Jimmy, I've all today to enter up. This diary has received its last entry, and the safe, another deposit. It can keep your sister's diamond bracelet company. There. Did you find that at the club, too? Your sister is careful with her things. 
Because of the crowd here today, she gave it to me to mind. Well, I do think you're a pig. I have a jolly good mind not to give you your birthday present. Jimmy, darling, you will give Frankie back her diary, won't you? Frankie loves you so very much. Don't you love me a teeny bit? I love your funny face Your sunny, funny face For you're a cutie with modern beauty You've got a lot of personality And to a thousand loves I found in having you around Though you're no Robert Taylor The world's I'd not replace Your sunny, funny face But Jimmy knows Frankie too well to let that kind of appeal soften him. He goes back to his guests and Dugsy eagerly greets Frankie. I thought I must have dreamt you. Well, aren't you going to kiss me again? Oh, I only did that at the airport for a bet. Oh, I'm a betting man. Thank you, but I've made my bets for today. It was such a perfect welcome, too. What intrigues me is how you got here. Oh, Jimmy and I are old pals. We're like brothers. So that makes me a, a sort of uncle. Does it? Then, Unky darling, will you do something for your niece? She's in the most awful trouble. Oh, will I? Lead me to it. Not now. You'll have to come back after. I want you to burgle Jimmy's safe. Burgle his safe? Well, I can give you the combination. He's stolen some papers of mine and locked them in it. Not old Jimmy. Oh, you've no idea what he's turned out like. I'd do it myself, but if he caught me, he'd kill me, so it must look like a real burglary. But, but oh, have a heart. I, I mean to say, oh, old, old Jimmy, host and all that. Of course, if you're scared, fancy being afraid of burgling an old safe. Well, I'm crazy, I know, but when you look at me like that... Like this? Yes, heaven help me. It makes me want to take you right into my arms. I didn't mean to start any scene to make you sigh, hope to die. It's most immoral for us to quarrel. Why can't we both agree? Don't you know Ben Franklin wrote about this thing at length? On the proposition that in union there is strength Why raise a storm up if we'll just warm up The blues will slumber, we'll, we'll have, have their number. number Let's kiss and make up, come on, come on, let's wake up for I need you and you need me. Sweetheart, let's forgive and let's kiss and make up. No use to cry or break up. When we can live in harmony. I'll give you your way. You give me my way. And out the doorway. Our cares will fly away If we Let's kiss and make up No use to break up We need each other, dear Let's make up, dear Now you know what Jimmy meant about Frankie. Dugsy is hopelessly in the toils, and that night, when the house is quiet, he steals into the study, closes the door while Frankie keeps watch on the stairs, and switches on the light. As he does so, a masked man who has just entered through the window almost jumps out of his skin. It's a cop. I'll go quietly, Governor. Blimey, it's the Major. Chester! Oh, no, it can't be. It is, though. Your old driver, Batman Herbert Chester. And if I hadn't have took my boots off, I'd click my heels. And what, may I ask, are you up to this time? Bless you, Major, sir. Cracking of saves is me trade. Well, well, I think this calls for a drink. If I remember rightly, you take yours neat. My mother take it where and how you find it. Yes, and how you used to find it. Yes, wrap yourself round that one. Ta, oh, Governor. Yes. I will say your paws are good'n. Down the edge. Oh, bang her. Oh, so you're a safe cracker in civil life. Oh, a lot of good it was me locking things up, but I must say you let me off lightly. Oh, well, in the army we was partners in crime, as you might say. Oh, it calls for another drink. Your turn to pour. 
Oh, and a nice looking bit of cut glass it is too. You know, you're the first cracksman I've met. The first you know you've met. Well, I did know a man in the tax office once. Up in Ned Kelly's flats. I'm oddly in that class. Mm, must be hard work. Bungo. Down the edge. <sighs> what, collecting taxes? No, cracking safes. Easy once you get the door open. Ah, <sighs> That's scratched where it is. <coughs> oh, oh, a little more glass in my next one, please. Oh, take another. Take into me trade. Tell me, Chester, where did you pick this business up? Well, seeing it's you, Major, I'll tell you. I started by pinching milk bottles and worked my way up from the doorstep, as you might say. Oh, just shows what you can do if you put your mind to it. Yes, live and earn. Well, uh, well, this won't get the baby a new dress. Oh, well, Joe, mustn't keep you from your work. Mind if I watch you? Of course not. Uh, let me have a look at it. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Another drink I could open up myself without the con combination. Get your combinations. They're sissy. They're awfully cosy in winter, though. Of course, if I had the combination for this bit of tinware, I'd save myself a stick of jelly. Oh, mustn't blow up Jimmy's safe and make a noise. Who's Jimmy? The man loans this house. Better use the combination. Now, you're getting me confused. I thought this was your place. What's that? Can't you open it, Hunky? Oh. Who's she? Well, this, this is Frankie. I don't catch on. Is this Fagan school for beginners? There's nothing to worry about. We're all pals together. Mr. Chester's going to open the safe for us, Frankie. If you'll all keep quiet. How too perfectly marvellous. Shh, watch him. Oh, darling, you look wonderful. Unky, remember Mr. Chester? Oh, he's too busy to bother about us. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's marvellous. It's marvellous. You should care for me. Oh, it's awful nice. It's awful nice. It's paradise. And it's paradise. It's what I love to see. My dear, it's four leaf clover time. From now on, my heart's working overtime. It's wonderful, it's wonderful, it's marvelous, marvelous that you should care for me. Quiet now. This is the tricky bit. One, two. Did you remember to switch the burglar alarm off? Oh, my hat. Got it. Hey, what the... Quick, that blue envelope. Grab it while I pull the switch. Right. Hey, hey, those were the lights you switched off. No, that was me. Quick, this way. Coming. Stop! Stop or I fire! And leaving Jimmy standing before his rifle safe and Dugsy and Chester driving rapidly away, the curtain falls on Act One of Funny Face. Though you're no Lana Turner, for worlds I'd not replace your sunny, funny face. <laughs> Following their safe-breaking exploit, Dugsy and Mr. Herbert Chester made a dash from Jimmy's house in Dugsy's car and drove off. Dugsy didn't care where they went, so long as they put a wide gap between themselves and the shooting. Day has dawned, and as the car turns a bend, they come to a placid lake with a large hotel built on the foreshore. Dugsy pulls up at the side of the road and nudges his fellow criminal. Oh, wake up, Herbert. We've arrived somewhere. I, Ah, Lammy. It is true, then. I am with the Major. Hmm, like old times, eh? And you happen to know where we are? Well, for crying out, if it ain't the canoe in. Ah, then what say we go in for breakfast? In the bed, dump. Crops. If that's what you call a sanitarium. A sat you know, where they take you when you're pretty crook. Well, a sanatorium? Well, it couldn't be better. They'll never look for us here. No, we've got to stick together till the breeze blows over. You'll be my patient and I'll be the doc. So in they go, as Dr. Potter and Mr. Brown. The sleepy clerk takes them to their suite, and after a hearty breakfast, the doctor telephones Frankie, who drives over to collect her diary. Instead of getting it, she gets a lecture from Dugsy. A nice mess you've got me into. We might have been shot. But wasn't it thrilling, especially when the alarm went off? Oh, yes, you chose a wonderful moment to warn us. You can't blame me for that. After all, your friend is supposed to be a professional. Yes, and that'll be the day when I works with an amateur again. Never mind. You did make a most professional escape. The police haven't got a clue. Oh, that's what you think. There's only one thing to do. You must tell Jimmy the truth. 
me tell the truth to Jimmy. Yes, even if the shock kills him. All right, I will. I'll tell him it was you who burgled the safe and stole the diamond bracelet. Diamond bracelet? All I took was the envelope with your private papers in. Well, the diamonds have gone too. Of course, your friend. <coughs> now, let me get this straight. I love you very much, Frankie, but you're such an awful little liar. <gasps> oh, I hope I never see you again. Never will be too soon for me. Come on, Herbert. Yes, let's get cracking, Gub. Diamonds is off. Stop. Come back. Oh, I thought you didn't want to see me again. Well, you know what a liar I am. Frankie, little funny face. Oh, Duxy. Don't mind me. He loves and she loves and they love, so why can't you love and I love too? Why can't you and I love? Birds love and bees love and whispering trees love, and that's what we both should do. Oh, I always knew someday you'd come along. We'll make a twosome that, that just can't go wrong. Hear me, he loves and she loves and they love. So why can't you love and I love too? He loves and she loves and they love. So why can't you love and I love too? That's what we both should do. Oh, I always knew someday you'd come along. We'll make a twosome that, that just can't go wrong. Hear me. He loves and she loves and they love. So why can't you love and I love too? I love you. Oh, Frankie. Oh, you take it, Herbie. I'll be glad to. Hello? What? Who? Who is it? Lady wants Dr. Potter. Uh, wrong number. Uh, no, no, that's me. Better ask what she wants. Yes. Uh, this is Dr. Potter's room. Yes. Yes. You don't say. Yes. No. Ah, uh, well, Lady, uh, that wants to know if she can enter for a consultation. Oh, uh, better tell her I'm booked right up. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, lady, but this one's full. But send your money in and we'll give her a ticket in the next. That fixed her. A lovely doctor she'll think you are. Oh, but wait till she sees me. You know, I think I'll specialise in psychoanalysis. In what? We call it pausing when I was at school. Pausing and analysing. No, no, no. This is quite different. They tell you their dreams. And you tell them whether it'll win or not. Will I be your first patient? Well, why not? I'm a physician whose mission you know deals with the subject of dreams I'll burst your troubles like bubbles for all oh, my dream is just what it seems bring your dreams to me and I assure you I'll interpret them that's how I'll cure you if happiness is failing you tell the dark if you've no sweetie trailing, you tell the dark. If Mr. Gloom is hailing, you tell the dark. Tell it to the doctor. Come along. I don't know much of medicine, but I say, I'm just as smart as Edison in my way. So if you care to take happiness out of heart, come and tell your troubles to the dark. Meanwhile, Jimmy, frantic about the whereabouts of the missing diary, has trailed Frankie to the hotel. He learns that she's gone up to Dr. Potter's room, bursts in on them, and Herbert, thinking the police have come, makes a dive into the next room. Hands up! Good heavens! Dugsy! Why, well, hello, Jimmy. What's Frankie doing here in your room? I can explain everything. You keep quiet. As for you, Dugsy, I could forgive you for robbing my safe, but to steal my ward... Oh, now listen, old man. I ought to shoot you where you stand. Oh, you wouldn't do that. Wouldn't I? Oh, how do you know? I mightn't be your future prime minister. You couldn't be. You talk too much. Oh, give my kiddies a thought. I didn't know you had any. Oh, just picture them wailing for Daddy to come home. Little Ella, little Lon, little Slam... Waiting for a father who never comes home. He might be a commercial traveller. Oh, and their mother, not even a pension. Have you no heart, Jimmy? 
Oh, I can't do it. I can't shoot you. Lend me your hanky. You'd better go into the bathroom, dear, and wash your face. I'll keep Dugsy covered. He won't talk me over. <laughs> That's a brave girl. But remember, this gun goes off easily. All the better. Well, my much-married uncle, so you've just been fooling me. Oh, don't be silly. I was only fooling Jimmy. But then you're not married? No, of course not. There's only one girl for me. But she is such a little liar, I don't know what to believe. So I think I'll go away. But, Dugsy, maybe I could turn over a new leaf. My one and only, what am I going to do if you turn me down when I'm so crazy over you? I'd be so lonely, where am I going to go if you turn me down? Why, black and all my skies are blue. I tell you, I'm not asking any miracle. It can be done, it can be done. I know a clergyman who will grow lyrical and make us one, make us one. So my one and only, there isn't a reason why you should turn me down when I'm so crazy over. Herbert, waiting for the coast to clear, remembers he's not yet examined his loot. He opens the large blue envelope he grabbed from the safe and, to his disgust, finds Frankie's diary. Thinking he's been double-crossed, Herbert sees red, flings the door open and rushes in, brandishing his gun. Grab the air, all of you. Go oh. on. Uh, nice mate you turned out to be. You take the jewels and give me this. My diary? Diary? So that's why you came to see me, to steal my ward's diamond. Oh, rats, I don't know anything about your beastly jewels. All I took were some private papers of Frankie's that you'd stolen. They're in this envelope. Hand it over. Drop that gun or I'll shoot. Ow. Oh. oh, it went off. I told you it had a hair trigger. Ah, oh, Christ, that shaved me head. Swelp me if it didn't. Blimey lucky I had me hair cut yesterday. Now, look here. Can't we just settle this all friendly like? Yes, what about it, Jimmy? Here's the envelope with the papers in it. The bracelet, you mean? Jimmy, were there two envelopes? Of course. Oh, how too utterly gorgeous. Ah, uh, wouldn't that rotate you? And I'd pick the blank. Oh, well, I'm through. I hope the beat gives me a good long stretch. This world's getting too balmy for me, the way the people dress and talk. A babbit met a bromide on the avenue one day, and they held a conversation in their own peculiar way. They both were solid citizens, and they both had been around. And as they spoke, you clearly saw their feet were on the ground. Hello. How are you? How's the folks? What's new? I'm great. That's good. How, how? Not good. Well, well. What to say? How you been? Nice day. How's tricks? What's new? That's fine. How are you? Nice weather we are having, but it gives me such a pain taken my umbrella, so of course it doesn't rain. Hi-ho. That's life. What's new? How's the wife? Gotta run. Oh, my. Tell our olive oil goodbye. Before they met again, some 20 years they had to wait. This time it happened up above inside St. Peter's Gate. A harp each one was carrying, and both were wearing wings. And this is what they said as they were strumming on the strings. Hello. How are you? How's the folks? What's new? I'm great. That's good. How, how? Not wood. Well, well. What say? How you been? Nice day. How's tricks? What's new? That's fine. How are you? You've grown a little stouter since I saw you last, I think. You must come over someday and we'll have a little drink. Hi-ho. That's life. What's new? How's the wife? Got to run. Oh, my. Tell our olive oil goodbye. Say what I mean? Send for the old black Mariah. I want to go where there's peace. Oh, no. You can come and be our driver. Oh, yes. Won't he be just sweet driving us round on our honeymoon? Major, I'll drive you anywhere in a proper peaceful sort of war. But not for that kind of... What's this? Are you really taking Frankie off my hands? With your permission, of course, Guardian. With my blessing. And my condolences. <laughs> Turner for 
world's hard not replace your sunny, funny face. Funny Face, you heard Kenrick Hudson, Don Moore, Robert Peach, and Patricia Kennedy. Your singing stars, Jeff Brook, Eula Parker, with the keynotes. Orchestra and chorus conducted by William Flynn. Your narrator was Morris Keller. Funny Face was produced by Alfred Potter and directed by Cedric Zahara. Oh, you're no Lana Turner, four worlds I've not replaced. Your sunny, funny face.